Pro for the Mac is filled with so many amazing features and customization options. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the settings that I would recommend changing. To access your settings in DJ Pro for Mac, you're gonna move your mouse up, go to where it says DJ Pro, and then now we are going to be in settings. So I'm gonna go over here from general all the way to advanced and just quickly show you guys what these settings do and why I would recommend turning them off or on. So the first one is going to be start playback. This one I think comes automatically on if you first download the app. So it may throw some people off. I knew it really frustrated me. So what this does is as soon as you load up a track, it starts playing, which some people, um, I talked about this in other videos and some people said that people used to other softwares or turntables are used to this and it and it's a good feature but for me and my style of DJing because I've only d really DJed with DJ Pro it's really a to not be able to choose when you want to play the song so now if we turn that off when we load up a song we get to choose when to play it and when not to play it so it's up to you I would recommend leaving this off Next is going to be this one, Protect Act Active Deck. So with it off, watch what happens. When you load up another song on an active deck, it'll cut the music out and completely ruin your DJing. But now if we turn it on... Now it says right deck protected you are going to load a track onto a protective deck do you want to proceed so if you wanted to do it you could press load but if you did it by accident loaded it on the wrong side or press the wrong button or knob then you could press cancel and then you are protected next it's going to be over here the slider range so right now it may start you at eight percent so if you're at 85 bpm you could only go eight percent up eight percent down and now the lower percentage that you choose, the more control you're gonna have with these BPM sliders. They're a little bit harder to use, so it's good to have some control. But I like to have it at either 16 or 25 because I like to do some decently big BPM jumps when I'm doing my mixes, but it's up to you. I, would, I wouldn't do 75% because then it's kind of impossible to get the exact same BPM. So I would definitely leave it at either 25 or 16 to be safe. Next is start time and stop time. This may be on when you first uh, when you first start the software. What it does is if the start time's on, it's gonna have to build RPMs like a regular record deck. So listen. So you heard that like startup sound as it's building up speed. So I just find that annoying. I don't know why why you would want that unless you're used to DJing with turntables and want that um, old school turntable feel. Next is gonna be stop time. This is going to do the same thing, but the opposite when you stop the song. Only time I use this is if I'm going from really big BPM to a really small BPM. So it's going to be like a crashing sound. So now it kind of crashes, slows down, and you could drop it into like a slow hip hop song if you want. That's the only time I use that. So for the most part, unless you're doing that trick, I would recommend to leave that off. I'm gonna skip over devices. I did this. I did a whole video about the audio devices hit, uh, with headphones, stuff like that. DVS. They haven't sent me the DVS kit yet, so still waiting on that. Next is gonna be auto gain. So this software it's very difficult to do to adjust the gain on yourself if you're used to other softwares or turntables or cdjs you're used to adjusting the gain pretty much every time you load up a song but in this software the gain control is this tiny little knob here that's really hard to use but the app has an amazing auto gain feature so when you load up a different track it's going to automatically adjust the gain so that your volumes are similar So if I load up this one, watch this gain on the right. You see how it loaded up because this is, it is a has less sound volume in the song, so that one went up. But then if I switch to a different song, it goes down automatically. It's a great feature. It works great. 
auto mix, I would do the transition automatic. You could choose the transition. It's going to do the same transition every time. But if you do it automatically, it's the app is going to choose when to do it based on the genre, based on the songs that are mixing. And it's kind of like having a, a real DJ doing mixes. It sounds really good. And some of the transitions are perfect. Appearance, jog wheels, I would keep on extended. You could do compact light, compact dark. But with extended, you get more surface area on your jog wheel. So if you're trying to scratch or adjust with your mouse, then it will be a little bit easier. With the more surface area, you'll get more control. And now shortcuts, this is a bonus. This is where you're gonna find all your keyboard shortcuts and you could customize them to any keyboard shortcuts you want. It's a benefit with DJing with the Mac over the iPad because you basically have a controller with these key with these keyboard shortcuts. And if you wanna learn more about the keyboard shortcuts for DJ Pro for the Mac, check out this video over here.